Uh, the Metallica audition was, uh, well, first of all, it was quite the honor to be asked. Um, they only had a handful, a couple handfuls of guys they asked. And from what I understand, you had to be asked. There was no like, hey, I want to audition. It wasn't possible. So I was Bob Rock's only suggestion, which was awesome and a dub of confidence. Um, I was very familiar with Master of Puppets and the ferocity that Cliff had. I'm a finger style player. I know how to do the, the Harris two finger thing or the Cliff three and um, <clears throat> well versed in all this kind of stuff. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in there and kick this thing hard. And I, I sing. So there was background vocals and stuff. Um, mind you, it was 10 years ago. So uh, Bob Rock suggested me, the camera crew was there, uh, Dr. Phil was there, and uh, the thing they don't tell you about in the movie, uh, for obvious reasons, because Robert won the gig, and you know, it's about Robert winning the gig, that whole section of the bass auditions. Um, and it's not about me, but I'm in there, and I'm very honored to be. Uh, but I was there for like four hours that day, and everyone else was in and out half hours. And I was the last guy to audition. Bob sort of wanted to save me for the end. And uh, I mean, Lars tried to stump me. We met and we talked and there's cameras watching you. Yeah, it could be a little nerve wracking. I was so confident because there's Bob Rock in the studio. There's the crew that I know his whole crew, Eric and all those guys. And I was just like, felt like I was at home. And uh, it, it was an ass kicking audition. The clip they show on there, I, I don't even know if that really says anything, but it was great. And I listened to their new stuff. Bob Rock gave me a big hug at the end of it when he walked me out and said, I'm so proud of you. And it was a fantastic experience. I think I stumped him though, because um, it took him a couple weeks to call me back. And I was kind of waiting and I was flying back home going, holy cow, did I move some weight here? Or are they actually thinking about this? And um, Kirk Hammett called me and said, Chris, you know, uh, we really liked you and we wanted to call you personally and say, we are gonna go with Robert. We've known him for years. I'm kind of a wild card at this point in my career. It's 10 years ago. I wasn't as world traveled. Um, I was a lot younger looking and they said, you look like Bob's kid. And I was like, oh, geez, you know. Um, maybe things would be different now. I've been around the world, you know, that was ever since then, over and over and over touring. and. Uh, maybe they would have had more confidence in that. Uh, but I was a wild card. So Kirk says, we're taking Robert, so Ozzy's gonna need a guy. Would you like us to suggest you to Ozzy? Because we really like you, we'd be happy to. And I said, are you kidding me? One dream to the next. Kirk, that sounds amazing, thank you. So my heart sinks, I don't get the gig. And yet, we're gonna suggest you to Ozzy. So I was like, fantastic. So. I got disappointed because Jason Newstead with a phone call got the gig. So it comes around a couple years later, um, I'm working with Mike Borden from Faith No More who happens to be an Aussie. And he, he was kind of like, when I met him, we played together and stuff. I was jamming in the room before he was there. And uh, he was like, Chris Wise, where'd you come from? You're gonna be the next guy for Aussie when the gig comes up. He was just like very flat out about it. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like when Bob said, I'm gonna call you for everything. You're like, that's cool, but you don't count on it. Um, Bob Rock did call me for everything that came up for a while. And uh, I got the Aussie gig later anyway. So it was like kind of meant to be. And I used to tell my mom and dad, which they got a kick out of, of course, um, I'm gonna go to Hollywood and play with Aussie someday, mom and dad. <laughs> and it happened. So the Metallica story is great because they really wanted to get me an Aussie. And I ended up in there anyway, and I was like, you know, I, I don't know uh, if I, I would have fit Metallica, but playing-wise, I can do all that stuff. And I, I was ready to put on my denim suit and go crazy for sure, <laughs> if they wanted me. <laughs> but everything works out, man, you know. Um, the cult asked me back in 2006, and, uh, you know, I, I've had the pleasure of some of the biggest artists of all time, you know. Uh, it was great to play with Ozzy. Uh, I love Ozzy's voice. I just love him as a person. I mean, even before I met him. And uh, there's something just really, like, kind of like Ace, you know? There's something just really natural about who they are. Like, they're, they're one of a kind. So I was having a laugh with Ozzy, like, like, every day. And he'd say, 
Chris, mate, you're gonna effing love me because the bass is gonna be really loud and I wanna hear more of those riffs. And I'd sneak in riffs. We were doing uh, Mississippi Queen. Uh, and I threw in like, you know, or something like that. And right before the vocal came in, you know, Mississippi Queen, and I throw in a riff right before the vocal. And he kind of looked at me and he was like, and, he, and then he asked for more of that. So, I mean, that was just as awesome as it could get. And, and uh, Bob Daisley, uh, Daisley, sorry, Geezer Butler. I mean, these were some of the guys I studied. So it was natural to kind of play in the Aussie soundscape, you know, it was really fun. I played with Mick Jagger, I think in 2000, I'd have to look it up the exact, but um, it was for his uh, solo record, Got Us in the Doorway. Uh, I know Marty Fredrickson, the producer, and uh, he actually co-wrote a couple of Owl songs with me and uh, called me out of the blue. This is, this is why I moved to Hollywood, I guess. Called me out of the blue and said, Chris, are you available today? I said, sure, and Marty's great, super talented. And I'm like, why wouldn't I work with Marty? Let's, let's do it, I was free that day. And uh, he said, can you pack up everything and the upright bass, new strings, like be ready for a session. I said, sure. And he's like, awesome, like today, right now? And I'm like, I'll get ready right now. And I like, before I hung up the phone, I'm like, oh yeah, Marty, who's this for? And he goes, yeah, yeah, Mick Jagger, be here and like, you know, I'm like, okay, and I was just like, Oh, <laughs> so uh, I, I think Daryl couldn't make it in uh, for a couple sessions, and I, I just got lucky enough to be the call. And what I did was I played a bass guitar track. I thought I was a little too busy, to be honest. I didn't, but Marty kind of wanted me to try some stuff, maybe to stretch out. And uh, funny enough, that bass guitar track didn't make it, but my bow I put on top of it did. Uh, it's a song called Paradise, I think. Yeah, and I had drank expensive wine with Mick and sat with him and his chef and his, his posse, you know, after the session and chatted for a couple hours and, uh, you know, thought I was maybe going to be his bass player, but uh, Daryl was available again. And so I, I got lucky to come in and uh, be that guy that fills in sometimes too. So that, that was awesome. Mick did do a little dance in front of me when I was doing this and I was like in the twilight zone for a second and I went, snap out of it. You got a job to do. <laughs> <laughs> and also, um, Ace Frehley uh, just, he cracks me up on a, you know, he's, he's got a great sense of humor. And uh, I brought my upright bass in one day to the rehearsal and kind of shredded on the bow. And he sat there, and he was like, what the, what the heck is that? Like, I haven't, I haven't seen that before. And it was just, it was just so fun to kind of unleash this weird thing out on him and uh, you never know with the upright you know it's a, it's a unique thing but if there's a place for it with these artists and I can sneak it in I will 